Hey guys, good morning. Today we are going to be talking about the fourth and I think the coolest conic section. It is called the hyperbolas. And a hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane such that the absolute value of the difference of the distances from two fixed points called the foci is constant. What does that mean? Okay, right here is my foci here in red. All right, The distance from here to this point xy we'll call d1. And the distance from the other foci to this fixed point we'll call d2. That difference is going to be constant. The dis d1 minus d2 will always be constant. Okay, so that means that from the foci, for example, from here to here and from here to here, this distance, the long distance, minus the short distance will be constant forever, always. That is how you can determine what a hyperbola is, okay? That is what a hyperbola is. Just like everything else, you're going to have a center. The center is going to be exactly halfway in between the vertices okay, of the hyperbolas. You have a foci, of course which we already talked about. That, that's what helps define a hyperbola. And, and that's it. You don't have any co-vertices here. All you have in a hyperbola are vertices, the center, and the foci. Now, it looks very complicated. Now I'm about to make it even more complicated looking, but it's actually really, really simple. Okay. There's two types of, of hyperbolas. There is like just like a, a parabola, or an ellipse, there's a horizontal and there's a vertical. A horizontal is the one that we're looking at right now. And you're going to know that it's horizontal because it's going to be opening to the left and to the right. Also, you're going to know that it's a horizontal because in this particular case, please pay attention to the formula. It's similar to the ellipse, similar, except one major difference. There's a minus in the middle. So x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared. It's not going to be determined this time by who's bigger or not in the, in the vertical one. You're going to have the y value first. Okay, so just so you know, it doesn't have to, just like in the ellipse, where if you had x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9, you would know that it was an x-axis, a horizontal ellipse, because on the x-axis, because the denominator of the x squared was larger than that of the y squared. In the ellipse, it's not going to be like that. When x squared comes out first, it's going to be a horizontal ellipse. Okay, now, there's two types of, of axes here. You have a transverse axis, and the transverse axis is the axis, or it's kind of like the major axis, okay? The transverse axis is the axis upon which the vertices lie. The other axis is the axis through which the center lies, and that is called a conjugate axis. Okay? You know about your foci already here in red. That's easy enough. That's foci. You know your vertices. Your vertices are easy to determine as well, and you have your center. This little green box and these little red arrows, okay, are these little red lines. Those red lines are called the asymptotes. The little box, I'm going to talk to you about the box in a second. I'll show you how to make that little box. I'm going to show you how to graph these asymptotes in a second. But these asymptotes are kind of like boundaries. They're not kind of like, they are boundaries, okay? They determine how wide the hyperbola can go. You cannot cross these asymptotes. They are invisible walls or invisible barriers that cannot be crossed. Okay? Now, a vertical hyperbola. Same thing, except y is going to come first. So you know that when y comes first, okay, we're going to have a vertical uh, hyperbola. Just like in the, in, the, in the ellipse, to find c, there's a formula. It's c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Remember that in the ellipse, it's minus 
but in this one it's plus. How can you tell the difference? How can you remember? When you have a hyperbola, you have a minus here, and you have a plus to find the C. When you have an ellipse, you have a plus between the X squared and the Y squared, and you have a minus in between the A squared and B squared. Everything else here is the same. The transverse axis this time is going to go through the vertices in the center. The conjugate axis will only go through the center. Your red lines are the asymptotes, okay? And your green box, again, I'm going to show you how to calculate this. Please note that the asymptotes are linear equations. Very simple linear equations. Yes, sir? <coughs> when y squared comes first, it is a vertical hyperbola. Correct, and the asymptote is A over B. When the x squared comes first, it is a horizontal um, hyperbola, and the asymptotes are B over A. They do switch. Okay? Now, like everything, formulas. You have formulas. I'm going to skip the formulas with the centers at origin because that's 0, 0. They're the same formulas as down here, but except these are more complete because this tells you the equations of the hyperbolas when the center's at H and K. All right? I'm not going to read this for you because you guys can read this. You guys are pretty smart, very simple to understand. I want to actually get to the meat and potatoes of how to do this, how to work through this. Okay? Now, there are a couple here that I added, so make sure you watch the video again and write those down because we don't have time to have you copy them right now. Okay, I want to write an equation for the hyperbola shown at the right. First of all, this is going to be a transverse axis of what? What's the transverse axis here? What's the major axis here, in other words? The y. It's going to be the y axis. So you know right off the bat that it's going to be a y squared over a squared. The conjugate axis, of course, is the x-axis. The A, remember that the A belongs to the points of the vertices. So what's my A here? Plus or minus 3, right here, guys. Isn't that the vertex? The vertices? Yes. So my vertices are 0, 3, and 0, negative 3. Okay. My B, I don't know yet. My C, though, I do know. My C is plus or minus 4. Very good. And my foci is going to be 0, 4 and 0, negative 4. Remember, the foci always is on the axis of the transverse or the major. It's always with the vertices. Okay, they're always on the same axis. Now to get my B, well, we have said that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. All right? A squared equals B squared. A squared plus B squared. So c squared is 4, so we got 16 equals um, 9 plus b squared. So when I subtract that, that's going to be five, 7, right? So b equals the square root of 7. You with me here, guys? So that's plus or minus square root of 7. Now, what is the b? The b is on the, is on the conjugate axis. So in this case, it's going to be square root of 7, 0, negative square root of 7, comma, 0. Now, how does that help us? Square root of 7 is just a little bit less than 3, right? So square root of 7, it's about here. And 1, 2, 3, it's about here. The reason I can graph this like this, you see how I have my, my vertex here, guys? If I make a box... Going through my vertex, through the B, guess what? I can go ahead and connect these two dots with a straight line going through the center. Connect these two dots with a straight line going through the center. And that's how I get my asymptotes. Okay? Very simple. I'm not going to make you write the equation of the asymptotes per se. I, I can ask you, I can say, what is the equation of the asymptote here? Well, this is a y squared one, so this is y is going to equal plus or minus, it's, it's a over bx. 
So in this case, it would be 3 over the square root of 7, which is going to really equal 3 square root of 7 over 7x. Okay? That would be your equation. Now, we're going to have to stop right now, and I guess I will continue this tomorrow.